What is going on YouTube? Hannah back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we need to look at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P 500. I have a lot of new and quite exciting information that we have to talk about in today's episode. Specifically within the major cryptos, we have to talk about XRP seeing a small little pump to the upside here, retesting its top resistance at about 36 to 37 cents here. This is definitely good news, but it could also be a continued correction to the downside here as we do not have any legitimate proof Yet this is confirming a breakout just yet. Yeah, unfortunately, we did get stopped out on our trades, which it is what it is here. But I want to show you why you shouldn't just, you know, uh, take this as a FOMO, a fear of missing out that this is the breakout that we've, were, we've been waiting for. And to just throw all your money in here, expecting to see a pump to the upside. I'd like to explain to you why there's still more reason why we could see corrections to the downside before we see any positive breakouts to the upside and seeing parabolic levels up to 80 cents on XRP. There's still Still, a very high chance that we could continue to consolidate and correct lower, especially when you start to compile all the other cryptocurrencies and movements here. But definitely doesn't mean that XRP is doing bad from where it currently is, but it is just something that we have to look at a little bit more in depth. As for that, we're also looking at Ethereum, which I do have pulled up on a three hour chart here, which you can see is consolidating, filling in the gap. And probably today, we're going to see an answer as to whether this wants to break bullish or bearish. Same thing with Bitcoin here, also see an ascending triangle after a major dump, uh, dump to the downside here flatlined out pretty much on the relative strength indicator retesting three hour moving averages here and it looks like also we are going to probably start to see some sort of answer today as to which direction this uh, crypto wants to move to most likely to the downside unfortunately then we're going to be looking at the S&P which is pretty much uh, kind of consolidating right now we haven't been open yesterday or the past couple of days today is going to be the first day we open up and this should really set the tone as to where we do decide to go. Are we going to be breaking down? Are we going to be breaking or reversing back to the upside? These are going to be the answers that we find out shortly today, which is quite exciting. So definitely stay tuned for that. I also have a chart. I just want to flash it super quick here on the screen, which shows the historical performance of the S&P 500 index because somebody had recently commented on uh, on my channel yesterday in regards to the fact they were saying like, do you think bear markets have become shorter in the recent times? And I just want to touch on that subject so if you're watching this or you're interested stick around because we are going to be looking at that later on in today's video with that being said guys today's video is sponsored by rebus as you guys can see right here for those that don't know rebus is uh bringing DeFi investments to traditional investors it says welcome to rebus where trade via and DeFi come hand in hand an intersection bringing the two worlds together investments in crypto assets is bound to grow and naturally move uh or naturally more people are turning to their traditional finance financial institutions expecting crypto services to be available. Very true. That's where we come in. We'll assist in building the best crypto products uh, possible for conventional financial establishments, which is a very cool proje uh, project. More information, though, on Rebus will be later on in today's video. So definitely stick around for that. With that all being said, guys, definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and let's dive into today's episode. Moving forward now into today's episode, we're going to talk about XRP, then we'll talk about Rebus, and then we'll talk about... Uh, uh, the S&P 500. So XRP, Rebus, S&P 500, and the rest of the cryptos. Now, in regards to XRP and the breakout, the little pump that we had here, if I jump to the four hour, you can kind of see what we were dealing with. We had some sort of descending fractal here, which is breaking us bullish. You can see, though, we are overbought currently, though. But we did have this bearish drop to the downside, forming some sort of symmetrical triangle here, filling in the gap. And then we broke to the upside here, which is interesting because typically I would say this is more of a bearish bias more so leading to the downside here which is still possible this could very well be a bull trap but regardless we're definitely not doing too bad right now with the correction of the upside we did however get stopped out on patreon so we have to reevaluate what exactly is going on right now but we are back to this resistance testing here now i want to show you guys why this is not something that you should trust and put your faith in and expect to see a reversal i just want to show you something here if i zoom out a little bit how often do you see the price of xrp breaking through this purple band here on the daily you could see it hopefully numerous and i mean numerous occasions do we wick above here one day or a few days and then we reverse back down below it it happens time and time and time again over the past couple uh, over the past couple of months if not more than you know uh, over a year now we've seen this happen consistently so the fact that we're now seeing it again especially at a major price ceiling with a major downtrend here is just screaming definitely not going to be a uh, breakout uh, season just yet although it's possible and we definitely can't rule that out of the equation here 
It doesn't appear like it's going to happen right now. What I'm really waiting for, which would definitely turn the tides here, is waiting for the XRP's weekly chart to confirm when we're buying in. As you guys can see, this is a more sound graph on the weekly charts here. You can see now that we don't necessarily have daily candles closing above, nor do we have weekly candles closing above. All we see is the uh, during the week, intra-week trading here, you can see we've wicked above here during the week, but end up inevitably closing below it or just retesting it and reversing downwards. And typically what's followed after retesting that is not so much uh, an enjoyable movement here, unfortunately. Now, the fact that we're retesting this again definitely holds some um, signs right now. It's good that we're here retesting it because this is when the tables can turn is at this point. Unfortunately, today's Tuesday and we have over five days and 12 hours left before we can determine whether or not we're going to be breaking out because it's very possible that throughout you know, this week, we could easily see the candle wick back up to 39 cents and then reverse right back down below it. And if you buy in expecting to see a reversal to the upside, you could get burned when the price is reversed to the downside, which is why if you're a conservative trader, I personally am waiting for the markets to close us above here. If we can close the markets at 39 cents, if we can close the markets at, you know, this is this week's candle. If we can close the markets at 38 cents here, any, any way above this major resistance, ideally closer to this resistance here would be perfect uh 40 cents to 39 cents here confirming closing outside of the downtrend that would scream okay i'll take a risk and buy in with the expectation of 75 80 cents coming now i don't think we're not going to see that happen i just don't think it's going to happen now i do strongly believe that we will see 80 cents and you know a couple of weeks or sorry months but i don't see that happening this very second although i could be proven wrong now, that's what i have to talk about about xrp i do want to talk a little bit more about today's sponsor rebus i want to give a huge shout out to rebus for for sponsoring today's episode. As with all cryptocurrency projects, please do your own research and never invest anything you can't afford to lose. So guys, Rebus is a DeFi platform with a goal to facilitate growth in the DeFi space by providing good answers to how do I invest and what can I do with those investments? They believe this requires allowing investors to buy DeFi products in a familiar language from trusted traditional financial institutions, such as asset managers, banks, and even insurance companies, also known as TradeFi. Now, currently Rebus is a platform built to support many different products that support entire application specific blockchains such as Atom, Juno, as well as Osmo built with the popular Cosmos SDK. Now, there can be an unlimited number of products within this platform. However, there are currently only two categories for all products, direct or layered, and some can be both. All products rely upon a foundational component to operate legally and functionally called the Rebus Vault. Rebus Direct products are built and maintained by the Rebus team and implemented directly into the Rebus Vault. Rebus is the sole supplier of these products using no third-party smart contracts or applications. And all direct products receive fiat currency backing through Rebus Crypto and partner client funds. You see, the Rebus Vault is directly linked to each product, collecting fees for the entire Rebus ecosystem and its partners. The Rebus Vault utilizes the Cosmos IBC ICA to interact with the application and collect fees for the Cosmos ecosystem and their partners. And thanks to its uniqueness, technology, and mission, Rebus is posed to help a large number of people adopt cryptocurrency. It will add a deep layer of trust to crypto investing and the use of digital assets by eliminating complexity without sacrificing decentralization or liquidity. It will also help several people earn passive income in crypto without risking their investments. Now, they even offer staking of their native token called Rebus Coin, and they even have liquidity pools, which they offer a few ways to do that. Now, before releasing their first financial products scheduled for the first quarter of 2023, the public coin distribution of Rebus had already taken place at the end of September of 2022. Now, the Rebus token is listed on Osmosis, MEXC, and even BitMart, and a few more are coming as well. And on the way to achieving its objective, the Rebus platform depends on two sorts of relationships. These are financial and platform partners. Normally, such collaborations are mutually beneficial. Rebus partners vary from those servicing individual investors to advising institutional investors on their strategies with over 6 billion euros in assets under management and expanding. As you can tell at this point, Rebus Chain, Rebus Investment Platform, as well as the Rebus token could be beneficial to a large number of users around the world. And if you want to give them a try, then check the description of today's video as they are already live. Now, it is only a matter of time before channel partners will start adding valuable DeFi products and traditional instruments to the platform. With all that being said, make sure to check them out in the description of today's video and also make sure to follow their social media to stay updated about the project. So with that all being said, I do want to talk about the S&P 500 and kind of what's been going on within these markets recently. So somebody had commented on the channel, uh, you know, have bear markets been getting shorter? And I don't necessarily think that bear markets have been getting shorter. I believe that bull markets are getting 
longer. And there's good reasons for that. As you guys can see here, this is next gen personal finance. This is um, all the historical performance of the S&P 500 here, which I think is a great chart to show you. You can see just for context here in the keynotes, the historical performance of the S&P 500 index during the US bull and bear markets. The bold numbers calculate the duration of months for the market, either being bull or bear, and the percentages cover the total return for that specific time period. So going back in time down to the year 1957 here, you can see we had a very nice 49 month run with an 86% return, followed by a six and a half month, 27 drop, 27% correction here. And you can see how long these take. The following uh, year, we had a 43% or 43 uh month correction. This is like 12, 24, 36, 48, almost, almost four years with an 80% return, followed by again, a 22% drop, which is eight months. You can see it's fairly short. They're not that long, but you can see here, typically as time has moved on, progressed out of, you know, the, uh, I'd say the, 70s outside the 70s the bull markets have lasted much longer and there's been less bear markets too so you do have a point you are correct in the fact that we have been slowing down here the sense in 2018 i'll pull up a chart that shows you um 2020 and 2022 here but you can see kind of the pattern that's taking place the bull markets have been lasting longer a 73 month a 60 month 147 months 106 months here and the bear market which does you know sting 30 percent drop you know Usually, if you buy in during those periods here, you can expect over the next coming years, 200% return, a 33% drop. You buy in at this point, you could expect a 582% rally over the next 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, uh, 60 times two, almost 10 to 12 year reversal here. 12 years of just bull run to the upside here. If not, maybe 11 years, we had 582% returns here. As long as you captured the opportunity here, this was 08, 09, we had 20. 51 and then 27 percent drops this is right around 08 uh and 09 here followed by a very long reversal back to the upside here so to show you this a little bit more s and p 500 ball and bear markets you can see we'll find a chart that shows you in recent times what exactly is going on here Let's pull one up that shows 2022. This could show it a little bit. You can see again, the historical length in time here. We had lots of consolidate, or we had uh, consistently lots of bear markets uh, break us up. But as time has progressed, you can see that we've had bull markets that have been longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. And then in recent times, this was 2020 right here. We had 1.1 months, this is saying, of correction down to 33.9%, followed by uh, one point eight years of um, correction back to the upside here, 114% gains. Then we now have in 2022, 8.8 .8 months, which has caused a 25% drop. But look at what has consistently happened after an 8.8 .8 month correction here. This was 8.8 .8 months, almost to the same drop here. This is nine, this is 8.8, 25%, .8, 33, followed by five years of 100% gains. You double your money within five years, which is even better than the, the average of 7%. Next, we move forward. You can see a 1.7% year has returned 227, 228% uh, gains. So typically, this is the best part, the average bear market period has lasted only 11.1 months with an average cumulative loss of 31.7. However, the average bull market period has lasted four years with an average cumulative return of 155%. Now we're about that bear market average. So nothing is out of place or out of whack yet for the current markets that we're dealing with. Nothing is skewing the data or being you know different from what we would expect. A bear market is necessary. A, a recession is not unexpected for the time that we're in. So to see an average of 31%, which is probably what we're going to see, is going to return a yield, ideally, you know, if history repeats, which it doesn't, but we can reference off of it, a return of 155%. So bulls from the lowest close reached after the bear market has fallen 20% or more to the next market highs. When the index closed at least 20% down from its previous high close to the lowest close reaches after it has fallen 20% uh, or more. So it's definitely very interesting, the data that's presenting itself on these charts here. And this is, no, that wasn't it. There was a graph, the previous graph that we just used, it was right here here. I just want to read what it says, these, these keynotes at the top here. 
which I forgot to show you. So it says the bull and bear facts. The average gain in a bull market is 153%, with the average length of a bull market being 55%. Now, the average loss in a bear market is only 30, with a length of 11.7. So we're in this about almost a year now. We're pretty much going on a year, which is about average right now. And we fall in almost the average bear market here. But what's expected after this correction here is a very lengthy bull market that can last a couple of years. We expect to see much more growth out of that, which is something to consider. A prolonged market period in which an investment has prices that rise faster than historical average, typically characterized by stock, uh, rise of at least 20% from its previous low. A prolonged market period in which an investment has prices that fall, typically characterized by a stock market that has fallen at least 20%. So a bear market is less than 20 or more than 20% drops here, which happens pretty often here. It happens pretty often. And we have I've talked about this more on my other channel, my second channel, if you want to learn more about that. But I'm just saying it's expected in this market to drop here. And we typically see this. And I believe strongly when we start to see the S&P correct back to the upside here, it will bring cryptos with it. It's just going to take some time now. Um, as for the markets today, I know this video is going a little too long, but that's pretty much what I want to touch upon. We'll go a little more in depth into short-term trades and short-term analysis tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. With that being said, smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, shout out to Rebus for sponsoring today's episode, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace. Peace.